and we are live. Welcome everyone. You are watching Hard Targets Multipolar News Channel. Open source intel by the people for the people. I was thinking about starting a Twitter space today uh, at the same time. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, talking a bit about Fed now, you know, while the iron is hot. I don't see a lot of people talking about Fed now, except in, you know, <laughs> crypto YouTube spaces. So while everyone's preoccupied with the Barbie movie and the Oppenheimer movie, which both came out today, I just uh, thought it would be worthwhile to talk about Fed now, CBDCs, you know, uh, while there is room uh, in the conversation for a while, while we're not being crowded out. Uh, in the meantime, though, all the usual links in the in the ticker. You, know, you can follow me on Telegram. Just you never know when you're gonna get bans. You can follow me on Telegram at Hard Targets Intel, as well as Iron Sun USA on Twitter, where we're trying to make a concerted effort to grow our follower count, you know, across all spaces. But, you know, we will be joined by some guests today. Going to be having the Yankee Tanky in the room. Just, uh, uh, maybe, maybe some other, maybe some other guests as well on the docket. But yeah, we're gonna keep it focused today. Uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, FedNow is a program that's been in the works since 2019, and it's uh, a supposed updated payment method for uh, banking systems in the United States to be able to have instant uh, payment settlements. So in the way that Cash App or Venmo, in order to have like a free uh, service of sending money, you have to wait you know, 48 hours or however long it is to be able to send money to and from somebody. Uh, FedNow would be able to settle that payment instantaneously. And the catch is it is a program that is centralized under the U.S. Federal Reserve. <laughs> Uh, and many are calling it the foundation for, you know, the CBDCs, central bank digital currencies that are to come uh, as part of a suite of, you know, World Economic Forum, dystopian technologies, CBDCs, digital IDs, uh, and, the, and, the, and the growth of the surveillance state. So that's what went live today. Uh, we have the the press release from the Federal Reserve here. Uh, as soon as I get my guests on stream, I'd love to read through it so so we can get some of the details and discuss the the implications of this. Because you know, in communist circles, it's you know we talk a lot about finance monopoly, about bank monopolies being the primary contradiction in, in not just American society, but in the world as the foundation of globalism. What we call globalism is a contradiction that is spearheaded by bank monopolies. The privatization of all individual property on into the hands of a few people, the offshoring of local production and, and supply chains into, you know, countries like Thailand and Vietnam and just all corners of the globe except within your home country, mass uh, immigration, uh, mass illegal immigration and human trafficking. Uh, all these symptoms of what we call globalism all have the shared uh, trait that they are create they are problems created by and profited off of by finance monopolies by banks 
by speculators like oil barons, steel barons, people who are the top, uh, well, people like that we would call like the, the elite of society or that we would very, uh, very easily recognize as you know, the, <laughs> uh, the some, some subject of a conspiracy, you know, like your, your Rockefellers, your Carnegie's, your Rothschild's, your George Soros's, your uh, pick, you know, pick a, pick a billionaire. And oh, your Larry Fink's, your, uh, to name someone who's still alive. But the uh, all one thing that most of those people have in common uh, is that they are. It's not that just that they're you know billionaires. They because there are billionaires who have made their fortunes off of uh, industries other than finance. Donald Trump is a perfect example. Yeah, I mean he's a real estate mogul, but he's also you know a TV celebrity, and he's also had a number of small smaller side projects like Trump Stakes. Uh, uh, it has a very, very famous book out, a couple of, I, I think a couple, but my point being that, you know, his sole source of wealth is not through owning uh, banking resources. That's what we're going to talk about today. Still waiting on our guests, but just to give you just to give you the background, CBDCs are part of. I, I would argue because we're not sure, like, how about the extent to the extent to how deep the tentacles of the Federal Reserve are penetrated into uh, the finance inf infrastructure. But that's what I would argue is that the Fed now system is part of a organized effort to centralize the control of finance uh, capital of money and debt and uh, and real estate property things that have you know this this, this fictional value. There's a concerted effort to centralize these things on, into the hands of even fewer people. You there, Yankee Tanky? Or are you... Am I hey, uh, how you doing, Tori? Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Now that we have our so waiting on some, we're still waiting on some guests, but um, yeah, how you doing? Good to have you on the stream. I am fantastic, and uh, I just wanted to say real quick that you know this this banking uh, centralized system is extremely dangerous. Uh, as someone who uh, is kind of an entrepreneur uh, to a certain extent. I do a lot of side work. The idea of cash no longer being part of how I get paid, uh, that's problematic. Uh, you know, uh, without admitting to anything criminal, let's just say that it's a lot easier uh, to get paid through cash than it is through digital transactions for obvious reasons. So, yeah, it's concerning. Yeah, the I mean, let me just share this to to Twitter. Yeah, the this has been in the works since uh, I mean this particular project has been in the works since 2019. As I was uh, preambling. Oh yeah, here we go. Yo, can you hear What's me? up, Milk? Can you hear me? I, yeah, we can hear you. I regret, uh, I, I regret that that is your nickname, <laughs> but there yeah. is, there is, there is nothing I can do. That is just. No, I know people uh, take the path of least resistance. Flat path of least resistance. It's all. I might, I might change it, but 
at the same time, <laughs> yeah. This you know. boy needs some milk. Yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to deliver the milk. Got to. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> things, things you say before you get someone else's wife pregnant. Oh God, I gotta change. I gotta change my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure something out. So... <clears throat> all right, let's. Uh, so now that we're all here, let us get this shared to. Let's get this live shared to far and wide. Okay. Man, got to get smoother at these. Getting everything, getting everything set up. These are the, these are the trials of small channels. So, yeah, Yankee Tanky was just saying that, you know, I, I mean, you know, when we've all been in situations like this, but, you know, uh, with Fed, Fed now going live and it being you know, heralded as this convenient and futuristic way of, of, of settling payments, you know, this peer to peer, uh, this, uh, this peer to peer system that is a like, you know, much needed update to the banking system, which to be sure, the banking system is. 50 years out of date uh, still it still uh, doesn't change the fact that America and Amer American workers are very de uh, dependent on like just being able to be paid in cash like even the ability to even have a like a bank account that with, you know, or getting your pay, like your paycheck in, you know, two days early, doesn't really change the fact that like, oh, good. We get our, you know, our $80 paycheck for the week in two days early. And that's so how I can still be behind on my bills because it's not enough to pay my, uh, it's not enough to pay my, my, my rent or my, my phone bill, my electricity bill. Uh, it's hard not to, It's hard to ignore the fact that, yeah, like, you know, this technology is purely for bankers. That on a peer to peer level, it's for people making millions of dollars to be able to uh, exchange money between themselves and on a banking to banking level to be able to do what the Democratic Party was using cryptocurrency for in Ukraine to wash money uh, more efficiently between all of like all of these uh, all of these dummy businesses like for people like you and me who you know get paid like who are working three jobs and get paid in cash and you know two of those jobs replacing you know replacing an outdated system that exploited us with a new and more efficient way of exploiting us uh doesn't exactly doesn't is isn't exactly uh a few the future we were hoping for <laughs> the view, uh, in, 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 in the movie. Yeah. And people, uh, <clears throat> people always talk about surveillance, which is obviously uh, the, the big issue. But another thing is, uh, I mean, first of all, a lot of people are, are cashless already. They just use a card for everything. I mean, I use my card for most things. It's just so much easier. Um, but when you use a card, you're getting charged uh, the, or the business is getting charged a percent fee. So like if you get paid $50, and you spend it with a card and let's say it goes through like 30 transactions of people spending with cards by the end it's going to be like five dollars because they keep skimming off the top whereas if you have fifty dollars of cash it's after 30 transactions it's still fifty dollars of cash so it's also like a hidden tax um it's like like i mean you already you have inflation i guess but i assume we're still going to have inflation like they're not going to stop the whole uh, fraudulent banking system we have, um, but yeah, it's like an introduction of another tax where they're they're just siphoning as much as they can, um, 